Thank you. Uh, Senator Markey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much. Um, behind me are pictures from the patients who died at Steward Hospitals in Massachusetts when Steward directed millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars away from paying their bills and into the pockets of corporate executives. Ralph De La Torre, Cerberus, Medical Properties Trust were just sucking out tens, hundreds of millions of dollars for their own benefit and leaving these hospitals without the resources which they need. In dirty ICUs, patients are bleeding out, they're dying in a hallway. Sunita, Teresa, Gilberto, David, Patsy, Michael, they were amongst the patients that our nurses were just referring to. And God knows how many others whose names we don't even know. Um, we know that more than 2,000 patients were endangered by Stewart Healthcare, according to the Boston Globe Spotlight team. They were grandparents, parents, children, aunts, uncles, nephews, nieces, friends, community members. But for those corporations, private equity, those profits came first, meaning the patients came last and ultimately just left it to the nurses to try to deal with this situation as it unfolded. Um, and this, this was a situation where every patient meant something special to the families and to the nurses as they tried to help. Ms. McGinnis, you saw the faces of these patients. Can, yeah, you, so can, you like talk about, can you talk about these people and their families and what the impact on them was? So, so patients die, and patients become less well sometimes when they empty the when 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 they en enter the hospital, and it it's inevitable, and it's that's life. When a patient becomes less well, or they die because the resources that they need were unavailable, that's greed. And when I think back over the years of the patients I was unable to care for in the emergency department because one of the, um, the, uh, the cardinal rules at Stewart is you can never decline a transfer. You might not have a, hus a, a bed in the hospital. You might have a 28-bed emergency department with five nurses and 35 patients. And when you get that call that a critically ill patient is coming and you say, I, I, can't, I can't possibly prepare for a care for that patient, the nursing supervisor says, well, I'm not allowed to say no, so neither are you. And then you get that patient. And it's a gut punch to know. that you won't be able to do for that patient what you know that patient needs. Time and time again, my organization, I personally have been to Beacon Hill. I've, I've, I've talked with people from DPH, EOHHS. We've reported power outages and, um, and other failures, uh, they closed the ICU at, um, Stewart closed the ICU mid-COVID at Neshoba Valley. And when the MNA reported them for closing it, the DPH called, called corporate, and corporate said, oh, no, 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 no. Our ICU was open, not to worry, even though it was dark in, the, in, in there, and there were no patients, and there were wires hanging out of the wall from where the equipment had been admitted, had, had, had been removed. And when the m &A called DPH and said, well, what did you find? They said, no, it's, it's open. Stewart said it's open. So then pictures were sent to DPH and said, this is clearly a closed unit and DPH did nothing. DPH is a toothless tiger, and that's why we need this to be fixed at the federal level. Every single entity that was closed in Massachusetts by Stewart was deemed an essential service. And DPH said, no, 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 it's essential. You can't close that. And then they closed it anyway, and there were no ramifications. Nothing happens. What would you have done with the $800 million that Cerberus took oh. out of the system? What would you have done with the $40 million that Ralph De La Torre used to 
buy his own private yacht. What could you have done with those revenues? We, we could have had beds that work. I mean, in, in my, I work on the 10th floor of a building. There's, there are supposed to be six elevators. One of them is working. A single elevator is, is working. They gave us these sleds, so we're supposed to do a lateral transfer. If there's a fire in the building, you go to the next building. And they gave us these sleds to drag patients who can't walk. I'm 65 years old. Do you think for one minute I can haul a patient down a flight of stairs on a sled? This is lunacy. Six elevators and only one of them. And even that one works most of the time. I, so yes, if we had that money, we'd have a, a facility that's clean and where things function. We'd, we'd have beds for patients. We'd have stretchers. We'd have food, staff. diapers, staff. The most of all roads lead to staffing. Yep. If we had enough staff, we could make do with missing some other things. But for every person you take away from the bedside, you increase the risk to the patient who's left, left without care. Thank, thank you for being here today. You are brave, and Dr. De La Torre is a coward. Uh, Absolutely. He, he would not come here to allow you to confront him with the reality of what he has left as his legacy at these hospitals. Thank, thank you. you.